Good evening everyone, welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight, the 18th of March 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo. Tonight we're going to have a look at ex-tropical cyclone Haiti as it pushes west across the Coral Sea towards Queensland. And we're going to also have a look at ex-tropical cyclone Gillian. Finally we'll have a look at the MJO. Here is ex-tropical cyclone Gillian pushing, sorry, ex-tropical cyclone Haiti. I always get these two mixed up at the moment and for the past week I've been getting these two mixed up. It's charging out here to the west or the west northwest, and I guess the big thing to note with Haiti is that while she's not ex sorry, he's not expected to hit the coast as a tropical cyclone, there is a fair amount of rain that will come with Haiti, and so we see there's really this band here of of rain and storm activity associated with the actual circulation. The circulation is in here, but the band of rain and storm activity associated with it uh, extends a long way out to the south. Now, what's going to happen is eventually what what will happen is this will push to the west um, pretty, pretty clearly there, uh, and it will basically go all along the coast from uh, the Cape York Peninsula or the Northern Cape all down the coast here um, and probably as far south as St. Lawrence or Rockhampton we'll see rain out of this. However, once again remembering that the rain will come on a southeasterly flow so if you are on this part of the coastline here you're going to miss out on the heavy rain but if you as opposed to if you're on this part of the coastline here you're going to see a lot of rain if you're on this part of the coastline here you'll also see a lot of rain as well so it's really that part between Ingham or just south of Ingham and Bowen that will miss out on the bulk rain you're still going to see moderate falls of rain but you're not going to see some really heavy intense falls that you could be seeing if you're on the north tropical coast in this area or the central coast and with Sunday's region in this area as for cyclone potential with X-Haiti, the Bureau do not expect this thing to form into a tropical cyclone at any stage, but it is expected to approach the Cape York Peninsula coastline on Friday. Uh, but the, at this stage, 5-20% to 20 is the most uh, the Bureau is willing to suggest that this has in terms of cyclone potential chances. If we actually look at the precipitable water imagery, we see X-Tropical Cyclone Haiti spinning away quite nicely here. However, in the last few frames, we've actually seen the circulation start to broaden out a little bit more and look a little bit more trophy rather than a uh, centralised low pressure system. So there is still a chance that the system will hit the coast as a trough rather than a low. Look, in the end, folks, it doesn't matter. The whole idea behind this is it's going to produce a fair bit of rain. You can see this moist air now starting to push west with it. And once again, as we said at the start of this broadcast, with that sort of with that sort of moisture pushing in to the west northwest in this direction we're going to see that moisture all all along the Queensland coastline so uh, there's going to be some moderate to heavy falls of rain the other thing you can see now is that we're getting a very dry air mass through the through the Gulf of Carpentaria too into this area you can see this blue shading and also some really dry air pushing into the far northern and into the Solomon Sea the northern coral sea and into the Solomon Sea as well which is quite unusual for this time of year that's normally more of a case that we would expect probably around mid to late April that's a real dry season type uh, issue that that happens so if we take a look at some track forecasts and some rainfall forecasts we can see that as we head to Thursday, the GFS model guidance pushes this system directly west, crosses a coast around Princess Charlotte Bay, or Cape Melville if you like, and then anywhere to the south of that system all the way down to about St. Lawrence, experiencing rainfalls of 30 to 50 millimetres over 24 hours. No real intense falls though because the system is expected to cross the coast more as a trough rather than a low. So there's no real centralised con convergent area. So it's just a general moist easterly flow that's fresh to strong and, and creating a lot of uh, a lot of low to mid level moisture, which is allowing a lot of shower activity to develop in the area, all up and down the central and north Queensland coast. So no centralised areas of ex intense rainfall. But as I said to you at the start, folks, it's 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 really that that region in here of the north tropical coast and that region here of the central Queensland coast uh, around the Mackay area 
they're the areas that cop the best rainfall in this moist easterly stream. You can see these isobars coming in like that. So you can see that in that stream, the Townsville coastline tends to miss out a little bit more. So does the rocky coastline. Similar scenario on the experimental high resolution model of the FIM-9 and we can see the system crosses the coast around Cape Melville on Thursday and we see just generally moderate to heavy falls of rain, more, more so moderate, all up and down the coast from about St Lawrence northwards and obviously the preferred areas once again in that north tropical coast, central coast with Sunday's area. The Euro model develops this and pushes it, no, sorry doesn't develop this but pushes this a lot further to the north up around Torres Strait. Now the the only issue with that, the negative issue with that, is that falls along the coastline will be a little lighter in this scenario because the pressure gradient squeeze won't be as great, the convergent possibilities won't be as high, uh, or probabilities won't be as high, and if there is convergence it won't be as strong. So therefore the falls of rain that the Euro is showing us are more in the 15 to 50 millimetres as opposed to the other models which are predicting more in the 30 to 80 millimetre range. Uh, the good news on the Euro is that the system remains very, very slow moving once it gets near the peninsula coastline and because of that we continue to see those 13, uh, 15 to 50 millimetre falls along the coastline So uh, for an extended period whereas the other models continue pushing this west into the gulf and therefore the rain decreases very quickly. So the Euro at least continues to pop shower activity onto the Queensland coast for an extended period of time. The UK Met model has a slightly more intense system, does develop this into a, or not develop this, it's already a low, but doesn't weaken this into a trough and actually keeps it as a low on its approach to Cape Melville. And what we see because of that is higher rainfall figures, higher rainfall estimates, even estimates up over the 100 millimetre mark along the North Tropical Coast. This is over 24 hours, uh, up over 100 millimetres on the North Tropical Coast with falls of 50 to 100 on the on the uh, central coast with Sundays and part of the parts of the north tropical coast that miss out on those heavier falls. Uh, once again, that little bit of a break here in that Townsville coastline region where you, rather than those 50 to 100, you're seeing more around the 15 to 40 millimetre uh, rainfall amounts or estimates. So, folks, look, this is a real positive scenario for a lot of rain along the east Queensland coastline. Once again, not dropping too much past St. Lawrence. Similar to the ECMWF or the Euro model, the UK Met model stalls this right along the peninsula coastline and because of that we're going to continue to see these moderate uh, moderate to even heavy falls of rain along the north tropical coast and tablelands or particularly the north tropical coast region uh, and the central coast and with Sundays region for at least a couple of days there on the Thursday, Friday and maybe even into early Saturday. So what, is all look, or what does all this look like for the Queensland coast? Well, tomorrow, not much happening, so not much to talk about. On Thursday, though, we start to see some really heavy falls developing on the Cairns to Tully or Cairns to Ingham coastline. We're, we're seeing falls of 50 to 100, some, some models predicting more than 100, as I showed you there. The UK met very, very intent on developing some big falls here. Also, the Bureau of Meteorology's Access Regional Model also intent on developing some very heavy falls between Cairns and Ingham. Uh, as we head to Friday, we're going to see moderate to heavy falls all through that Cairns through to uh, Ingham or Rolling Stone area just off the coast around Townsville, so Townsville more moderate falls and some possibly moderate to heavy falls right around Mackay in that 50 to 100 range uh, with lighter falls south and north of Mackay. So that's what they're looking at on Friday. And as we head to sun Saturday, we're still seeing some fairly intent modelling on keeping a lot of shower activity on the coastline, even rain even rain periods on the coastline between Cairns and Townsville. But once again, that Cairns to Ingham coastline is the, is the favoured region with lighter falls further south and lighter falls further north. The system is likely to now be starting to push towards the, or X Haiti is likely now to be located near the western peninsula coast, so we might be seeing an increase in rainfall on the west peninsula on the Saturday as well. So folks, there's some good rain there on the way for a lot of places, all the way from sort of Cooktown through to Mackay or just south of that to even to St. Lawrence. But unfortunately, the big drought declared areas inland and south of, uh, in southern Queensland, not expecting to see any sort of drought breaking activity coming out of this. 
So uh, that's enough on Haiti. XTC Dillon, uh, Jillian. Jillian is moving in a westerly direction. Is going to start producing gales if it hasn't done so already on its western quadrant, but is not going to be named a tropical cyclone at this point in time anyway. It's going to be close though. You can see here the gale radius developing very, very close to more than halfway around the low. Remember, in Australia, we need to see a cyclone. We need to see these gales, this area of red here, extend more than halfway around. So you can see a very, very tight, very close as to whether it will be or won't be called a cyclone tonight um, and into tomorrow morning before it starts impacting and interacting with land masses which will further limit and inhibit its chances of development. Don't worry Northern Territory, this is not coming towards you. There has been some pretty decent rainfall on the very, very far northern, very extreme northern parts of the Northern Territory from this system. But uh, in terms of Darwin and areas further south, uh, nothing, nothing to spruik about from this one, and there won't be anything to spruik about for it uh, for its lifetime. You can see over the last couple of days, X Jillian is really does does have a decent circulation here, and it as it tracks towards the west, but is also under the influence of some very dry air pushing north into the Northern Territory and into the Arafura Sea. You can see the dry tongue of air pushing uh, north and west. Uh, just underneath the actual circulation. So here's the circulation spinning away, spinning away, spinning away, and drier air pushing in underneath it. I guess the most interesting thing with X Jillian from a cyclone watcher's perspective is that a lot of the latest guidance from today and even last night is now suggesting that the system will eventually make cyclone status. Here's the GFS model prediction pushes west over Indonesia and East Timor and then pushes in a southwest direction. Once it gets over open ocean, the ridge breaks down out here so the drier air uh, is allowed to or, or doesn't penetrate as far north and moist air starts to advect in um, behind that drier air mass. And what we see is conditions start to ripen for this thing to to develop into a TC again, well off the coast of WA. In the longer term, expecting it to push in a southerly direction from there. So it, it's it. I mean, if it only needs to push southeast there from uh, to impact the coastline. However, none of the model guidance in the longer term is suggesting that will happen. However, it may get in some guidance. It gets a little closer to the WA coast than it has done in the past, but overall still not expected to affect WA in any way. Very similar track proposed by the FIM model as well, the high resolution model. Once again, they use the same type of physics, physics set that the GFS does, so sometimes the FIM model will also spin up things when it shouldn't, but overall very similar track guidance between those two models. Uh, the Euro does want to have a bar of it as well, but later and further to the west. So obviously if the Euro model comes out here over the next five days, this will have absolutely zero effect on WA and won't even get within a thousand kilometres of WA by the time it's a tropical cyclone, if the Euro model verifies. The UK Met model, which has done remarkably well with this system, also develops this into a TC. So we've got pretty good guidance here, folks, from all the uh, various global computer models that they they do develop this into a tropical cyclone again, but they develop it so far to the west that it's very unlikely to then affect the WA coastline. However, you know, as long as it's east of 100 degrees east, uh, we do need to monitor this system because sometimes they have been known to push directly southeast from there. It's difficult and uh, there's a lot of things acting against it if it's going to do that motion or it's going to move in that motion, but it has happened before. So even though none of the guidance is expecting it to happen, it will be something we'll need to monitor. And look, folks, the other thing we need to talk about is the Cocos and Christmas Islands. Now, they are going to be pretty close to the track of this, perhaps maybe a little bit too far to the west, but it really overall, the, it is something we need to watch, particularly the um, the Cocos and Christmas Islands in this area here, uh, possibly getting affected by the developing uh, tropical cyclone if X Jillian can maintain her, uh, maintain her low-level structure here through Indonesia and East Timor. Uh, there is the chance there that uh, it may affect, as it's developing back into a tropical cyclone, it may affect those islands. Remember, those islands are part of Australia and we do cover them in OCC updates. So here's what I mean, folks. The latest update of the GFS, for instance, has a Category 1 tropical cyclone or a very, very borderline tropical cyclone crossing right over the top of Christmas Island there on the Saturday night or Saturday evening. So once again, it is something we'll need to watch, especially if X Jillian can maintain her, um, her low-level circulation centre. 
around about that time once it gets south of Indonesia, uh, we could be seeing the potential for Christmas or Cocos Islands, depending on which model you look at, uh, being impacted and, and being impacted a fair bit by the developing or redeveloping cycle. And here's an example of the different track forecasts and how they might affect Christmas and Cocos. We can see the European here develops a tropical, lower tropical cyclone around about the Sunday and pushes it right in between Christmas and Cocos Islands as well. So that's a, that's a scenario that the Euro is suggesting. So once again, people and residents that do watch us from these islands, you will need to monitor and we will keep you up to date with this system as it has as it shows more potential of redeveloping into a tropical cyclone. We might issue mini updates for your regions um, for those of you that are interested. They won't be full updates, they might just be three or five minute things that'll go through the latest on this system if it crosses near those islands. So I guess the big question remains, is the wet season over? Well, based on the amount of dry air you're starting to see creeping up into the far north in the uh, northern coral sea, the Solomon Sea, uh, into the Arafura Sea, you would think that the monsoon will be nowhere to be seen and that, that we can kiss this season goodbye. However, 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 let's have a look at the MJO. The MJO currently is in Phase 1 and Phase 2. Now, in Phase 1 and Phase 2, Australia is dominated by dry air in the north, and by easterly wind anomalies. So that means that we're going to see dry southeasterly winds from big highs. And that's what we're seeing. So we're seeing everything we're supposed to be seeing this time of year with an MJO in this phase. However, as it heads to phase three, we're going to start to see an increase in potential of cyclone development off WA, particularly well off WA. As it heads towards late phase three, that's this area here. You can see this chart only goes out to 31st of March. By the 31st of March, we're starting to see some of the outliers suggesting the MJO will get back into late phase three, even early phase four. Phase four, phase five is the Australian region. If the MJO can maintain intensity as it heads towards phase four and phase five, early to mid March, early to mid April, we will see cyclone potential increase off the west coast and the north coast, and possibly even in the longer term, the northeast coast. However, that's too far to tell. So there is a chance there of an April cyclone uh, off, off Australia as this MJO pushes eastwards. Now, if we look at some of the projection, projected guidance further on, and we look now to the 14th of April, we can see that overall models really lose the plot once we get into early April as to the intensity and where the MJO will be lying. But if we look at an ensemble mean, we see that particularly for northwest WA, there is a chance at an increased cyclone potential towards the m middle part of April, possibly early April if you if you believe some of the eastern outliers, but, but really more around the middle part of April, we do see cyclone potential increase. At the very least, what we're going to see is an increase in shower and storm activity early to mid-April off in the northwest. So we're not quite sure whether that's going to extend eastwards towards Queensland in mid to late April, but at this stage we can be mildly confident, I won't say fully confident, but mildly confident that we will see at least another burst of shower and storm activity in the northwest with the potential for cyclones to increase in April slightly above what we would climatologically expect in April. So don't be surprised if we do see a cyclone off WA or the NT as we head into early to mid April. All right, folks, that's all we've got time for tonight. Uh, we won't, because there's no real cyclone threat to Australia, we won't update now until Friday. Uh, Friday will be a particularly interesting update, I guess, for the Christmas and Cocos Islands, who will be watching ex-tropical cyclone Gillian as Gillian shows signs of intensification. By Friday, we should also have a fairly good idea at where that rain's falling over Queensland too, so hopefully there'll be, uh, there'll be some decent rainfalls coming out of that for the Queensland coastline. Thanks for watching tonight, guys and girls. Good night.